In this tutorial, you're going to be shown how to set up a first person controller. You'll be shown how to use a capsule basically as your player character. You'll be shown how to move the capsule around, how to program to have the mouse look in whatever direction you would like to look in. You'll be shown how to set up gravity as well as a jump. You'll be shown how to keep your mouse cursor in your game screen as well as how to set up to have the escape button allow you to be able to exit out of that game screen. Thank you for taking a look at this tutorial and I hope that you enjoy it. Hi, this is Ali Arango for Game Visuals. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a basic first person shooter in Godot. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is select new project. Once we select new project, we can see this project name. So I'm going to name this uh, setting up FPS. Uh, once I do, once I put the name out, I can select create folder. So that folder was made uh, right here. So with that done, I'm going to select create and edit. So here we are at the uh, start off of a brand new file in Godot. Okay, as far as how Godot works, up here is the main menu in Godot. You can switch between 2D as well as 3D. Uh, a lot of times after you've picked your first, you know, whether you're working on a 2D game or a 3D game, uh, a lot of times the main thing you'll go to up here is the script button where you can work with your scripts. Uh, you can get to assets right here using this uh, asset library button. Uh, when you're working in a 3D game, when you're working on UI, you'll off, often tend to go to 2D to, to make up the UIs uh, in a 2D perspective. If you look to your left, the file system uh, is along here. If you look down, this is the system dock right here. This is where you'll tend to, you can actually uh, drag assets into here or you'll see your main assets here. When you're working with animations, you'll work with this bottom bar right here. Uh, this bottom section here tends to open up and show you whatever you're you're working on. Uh, this is this uh, dock over here is very important. This is the inspector dock. This is where you'll work with properties of the different uh, objects that you work at as you work. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here in Godot is we're going to make our world that uh, our Godot objects are going to exist in. So what we're going to do is look to the left, upper left, we're going to select 3D scene. This makes a spatial be aware. You could go to plus and make a spatial as well. Uh, Godot works by a node system. So pretty much everything in here is going to be connected to this spatial node. We're going to double click here and we're going to rename this world. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make something for our first person shooter controller to be able to stand on. So we're going to right click on world. And what we're going to do is we're going to select add child node. And what we're going to do here is we're going to search for mesh instance. So you can see uh, here's a mesh instance here. Be aware in Godot, when you see something that looks reddish, that's typically 3D. When you see something that's bluish, that's typically 2D. So we're gonna select create. Okay, there's two more objects we need to uh, bring in. Um, so we're gonna right click on me mesh instance. We're gonna select add child node. And what we're going to bring in now is a static body. So we'll search for a static body. We can see that here. So we'll select create. Be aware that because we had this mesh instance selected and we right clicked on this, this static body is parented to the mesh instance. I, you can see how like it's under. That's what we want it to be. So now we want to bring in another object. So we're going to right click on the static body, select add child node. And what we want to bring in is a collision shape.
we can see the collision shape here. So we'll left click there and then select create. Okay, what we're gonna do is set up the mesh instance. So we'll left click on mesh instance. We're gonna to look to our upper right. We're gonna to look to where we see mesh. We're gonna left click and then we're gonna select new cube mesh. So with that done, we're gonna look down, see this transform, select the arrow to open up the settings for that. We're gonna to look to this scale. For X, we're gonna put in 100. For Y, we're gonna put in 0 0.5. For Z, we're going to put in 100. Okay, the mesh instance allows us to see the mesh. The static body deals with the physics, so we left click on the static body. The settings for the static body are, for the most part, the same. So we're going to select transform. I guess they are the same. So uh, X is 100. Y is 0 0.5. And then Z is 100. Okay, so for setting up the collision shape, we'll select on that. For the shape, we want to select the arrow and then select new box shape. We're going to go to transform like before. However, be aware that uh, when you're working with a collision shape, things work from uh, the center out. So basically, you end up with your scale settings typically being half of what they were before. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our scale. Instead of 100, this is going to be 50. The Y is going to be the same, 0 0.5. The Z is going to be 50. So uh, yeah, X is half, Z is half, Y is the same as uh things were for the uh, mesh body as well as the static body. So now that we have our uh, object set up, we can move on to the next step. Okay, let's save our scene. So what we're going to do is go up to the upper left, select scene, and then save scene. Uh, the scene is set up to be uh, saved as world. T-S-E-N, that's fine, so we'll select save. Okay, what we want to do now is set up our file system. So see this uh, towards the lower right, this R-E-S, this is where our uh, Godot, the current work we're working on is being saved in this folder, and the folder is located here. So this is the main folder that contains our Godot work. So we're going to right click on this and select open in file manager. Okay, so here is the, the folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to select new folder. And for this new folder, we're going to name this scripts. Another new folder, we're going to name this assets so inside of that assets folder we're going to double click to go in there and then what we're going to do is make a folder another new folder and we're going to name this art we're going to make another new folder we're going to name this audio so now we're going to double click in on art to go inside of art and then in here we're going to make a new folder name this background, press enter, another new folder, we're going to name this opponent, another new folder, we're going to name this player, another new folder, we'll name this platform, another new folder, we'll name this tile set. Another new folder, we'll name this UI. Okay, what you see on the screen now is an open source uh, image manipulation program called GIMP. GIMP can be downloaded, I believe, at GIMP.org. Uh, it's an image manipulation program very similar to Photoshop. 
uh, I'm going to click Faux, New, and then for width, you want this to be 100. For the height, you want this to be 100. This is already here because I was previously working on this, so I'll select OK. Uh, then we see this. I'm going to go to the lower right, click Plus. This is uh, the, uh, I clicked on the Make New button. I'll click OK. So now I have two layers, this black uh, background layer, which was made because this black color was in the background there. I didn't have this uh, layer here. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold Control, roll my mouse to zoom in, then hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to first left click, right? And I left clicked because I want to draw a straight line across with that white paint brush. That's what I'm on, by the way, is this pencil tool right here. So I left clicked. I left click now, right? So now I'm going to hold Shift. I move my mouse and see I'm holding shift. See I can move this. Now I'm gonna hold I'm holding shift still. Now I'm holding control. Now control lock me, so I'm going straight across. So now I'm gonna left click. So I just I let go of both shift and control now. So now I'm gonna to go to the top first. I left click, not holding shift or control. Now I'm holding shift, moving my mouse down. I can move around. Now I'm gonna hold control and control locked me, so I'm going straight up and down. So I left click. That gives me this nice uh, pattern that you see here, this cross pattern. So now with that done, I'm gonna select the Make New Shape button. I have this uh, a new layer, sorry, not new shape. I'm gonna move this down beneath the uh, cross pattern we see there. So I'm gonna click and then select a blue color. I could also select a blue color from there. I'll select in here, I'll select OK. So now I'm gonna hold Control, press comma. So now I have this. So now what I'm going to do is uh, make a new transparent layer. And then for this, I'm going to click that blue color, go to yellow. Make a yellowish color. Yeah, kind of greenish. We'll select OK. I'll hold Control and then press comma. All right, so now I have that. as well all right uh the more time you take the better results you'll get so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first hide this yellow and now what i'm going to do is go to file export as and i'm going to name this uh blue grid and uh Here we go. So I'm going to go to Assets, Art, Tile Set, and then select Export. So I'm exporting this out as a PNG. So now I'll turn back on the yellow. And then again, File, Export As. This time I'm going to name this Yellow. Yellow Grid. And this should export to that same location. Export. Okay, here back in Godot, what you're going to do is select Mesh Instance, the upper left. You're going to look to the upper right. You're going to look, see the, where the cube's at, about an inch down on my screen anyway, uh, maybe a little more than an inch. You'll see Material. I'll select the arrow. Then you'll see this empty here, right? See the arrow next to the empty? You'll click that. You're going to look to see this new spatial material. You'll select that, right? Once you select that, you see this circle, right? This circle represents the material. You're going to click right on this circle. So you left click that. Once you left click on that, you'll see this albedo, right? You'll click the arrow there, and then you'll see texture. So where you see this empty, you'll look to the right, to this arrow. You'll click there. Now you're going to go down to where you see load. And then when you go to load, this is showing us the folder that our Godot, uh, the different objects that we're working with in Godot are at. So we'll select assets. We'll go to art. And then we're going to go to tile set. And we're going to select blue grid. And then we're going to select open. Okay, so we have the texture that we made in GIMP on our floor however it's too big 
So the when there's multiple ways we can deal with this. One way we're going to do is we're going to look to where we see flags, select the arrow, and then we're going to look into where we see this uh, this world triangular, right? We're going to put a check mark there. Now we we scroll down to we see this UV one. We'll click the arrow here. Then we see the triangular here. We'll click. We look to this on, and we're gonna put an arrow here. So I'm gonna click, and now you can see there's that grid pattern. Uh, so that's a nice way to set this up. Okay, so with that work done, we're gonna go scene, save scene. Okay, what we're going to do now is set up our first person shooter controller. We're going to set up the different pieces that we need to make that up. Okay, what we're going to do now is select world. We're going to right click, select add child node, and we're going to search for a kinematic body. So there's the kinematic body there. So we'll click there, select create. So then, uh, what we need now is we need a, a mesh instance connected to this. So with this selected, we'll right click there, select uh, add child node, and then we'll search for a mesh instance. So we'll select the mesh instance, select create. With these next pieces, we want them to be parented to the uh, the kinematic body. So we're going to select the kinematic body, right click, select add child node. So then for this, what we want is a collision shape. So we'll search for the collision shape. We'll select that, select create. We'll select back on our kinematic body, right click, add child node. And when we when we search for shapes, the shapes are put to the left here, which is nice. So we can select collision shape because we want another collision shape. We'll select create. For this collision shape, what we're going to do is we're going to name this foot. Now we're going to click back on the kinematic body again. And we're going to select add child node. And we're going to look for a spatial node this time. So we'll select spatial, select create. And then with this spatial node, uh, well, let's rename this to head. Oops. There we go. What we want to do now is we want to add a camera to this. So we'll right click and then select add child node. We'll search for camera. make this capital. So now we have our different pieces. Now we'll set up the settings for these pieces. So I'm going to go to scene, save scene. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is click on kinematic body. We're going to rename this player. Okay, so now with that renamed, what we're going to do is we're going to go to mesh instance, look to the upper right where we see mesh, we're going to select the arrow, and then we're going to select new capsule mesh. And then with this new capsule mesh, uh, we're going to go to transform, we're going to look to where we see this X, and we're going to enter in 90. We're going to click on this capsule shape where we see this mid height, we're going to change this to three. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to collision shape for the collision shape towards the upper right. We'll look where we see empty. We're going to select new capsule shape. We're going to go to transform, go to the X and set this to 90, very similar to before. And then uh, we'll click on capsule and then for the height, we'll set this to three. 
Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go to uh, our mesh instance, which is our floor, zoom back. I'm going to push that down some. Now I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click on foot, and we can see the foot there. I'm going to push this down. So we need for the shape, what we want to do is go to the upper right, and then we want to select new cylinder shape. I'm holding the mouse button rotate. We want this bottom of the cylinder to be lined up with the bottom of our capsule shape here. Now we want to go to head. And then for the head, what we want to do is move this up to around where the head would be. Move this up higher. Now we can see the camera coming out there. Okay, with all that done, we're going to go to our upper left, select scene, and then select save scene. Okay, what we're going to do now is select player. With player selector, we're going to go slightly to the upper right to this button that says attach a new existing script to the selected node. We'll left click there, then we'll select create. And uh, what this does, is this opens up uh, Godot's built-in script editor. Okay, as far as the as far as what you see here, we're writing this code in GD script. There's multiple scripts you can uh, use in Godot. We're using GD script. What you see most of this here is comments, not all of it, but most of it. What we're going to do is select this. We're going to delete that. And what we're about to do is we're about to enter some variables in here. Okay, these are going to be variables that you're going to be able to use in the properties panel over here. And what those variables are, are one variable is going to control speed, another variable is going to control acceleration, another one gravity, another one jump power. Okay, what we want to do now is get ready to set up for input. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our upper left, we're going to go to project. We're going to go to project settings and then we're going to select input map. And what we're about to do here is actually set up for uh, so we can have the buttons that we want that will control our movement. So we click in action and what we're going to put here is move underscore forward and then press enter. We'll then put in move underscore backward and then press enter. We'll put move underscore left, press enter, and then uh, move underscore right, press enter, and then we'll put in jump and then enter. So now with that set in, we'll look down to see this move forward. We'll select that. Whoops. Okay, we'll go to move forward and then we'll select this plus button. So for move forward, we want to select key and then W and then click OK. For move back, we want this to be key and then S and then OK. For move left, we want this to be sure. Move left key A, then OK. Move right D or key. Then D, there we go, then OK, and then jump, key, space, and then OK. So then we'll close that. OK, the next thing we want to do is we want to get access to the head as well as the camera. OK, to do that, we're going to enter in this code. And what this code basically means is is that uh, this will give us access to the nodes that are in the hierarchy to the left here. Uh, this on ready means when all of the nodes are fully loaded, these will be assigned to these nodes over here. Okay, we're going to put our next uh, piece of code in, and this code is going to set us up for uh, putting in input. So. 
what this code is, is this function, uh, function physics process delta. This is basically a game loop. So whatever is uh, indented in this code will run at 60 frames a second in a loop. What this line of code is here is this basically tells us, uh, this basically sets up which direction we're gonna move towards. Okay, we're gonna go back up to our variables. We're gonna put in another variable. This basically deals with 3D movement. Okay, this code here, remember I, I mentioned to you that uh, uh, this code, this line of code, this function, uh, underscore physics, underscore process, delta, basically runs a loop where whatever is quote unquote in this code runs 60 frames a second. When I say in, the way Godot works, it's pretty much like whatever is you see indented here is connected to this code here. So. When you look here, you can see if input action is pressed, move forward. So basically what this code is doing, this code is looking for to see if a button is pressed. And then when it sees that the button is pressed, it works with the code that you see here. So remember we said the input. So when you press W, you'll move forward. Uh, this right here, what is this minus equals head underscore basis dot Z. In Godot, when you move on a, a, a negative, in a negative direction on the z-axis, that actually makes you move forward. Uh, this positive actually makes you move back. This code right here is one of the pieces of code that keeps things running uh, smoothly, as in keeping uh, things from not speeding up or slowing down in a way that uh, you most likely wouldn't want to happen. Okay, this line of code right here, when you start to move, this makes you start to move smoothly. And when you stop moving, it makes you kind of stop smoothly. This code right here is actually what makes you move forward. This works with the vector three to actually move you uh, around. Okay, well, uh, working my way through this tutorial, getting ready to do it. I've looked at a bunch of different things and went over notes. Uh, one of the main places that I went to get this code uh, was uh, YouTube channel called uh, Code with Tom. Just want to give him credit. Uh, so if you want to check out, you know, more about this particular code, I recommend you go check out his uh, YouTube channel. Okay, with that code put in, what we're going to do is so I clicked on uh, 3D to go back to, to world, our world scene. We're going to click play. It says no main scene has been defined. Select one. That's fine. So when we put, I'm pushing A as well as D, W as well as the S. So we are able to move around. This is working correctly. That's excellent. Okay, what we want to do now is go back to the code. So I'll go to the player. I can double click on this code to go back to the code. Okay, one of the things you can do now is you can look to your left, left click on your player, right click, and then go down and then select save as branch scene. So I did that in between edits. So I'm gonna go back to the code now. Okay, what we want to do now is set up so that the mouse can uh, direct where you look at. Okay, to set that up, one of the things we want to do is look to where we see export uh, our export variable jump power or jump underscore power equals 30. We'll click behind there, press enter. 
And then what we want to do is enter in a variable for mouse sensitivity. Okay, above this function here, we want to put another function in. And this code here should allow us to look up, down, as well as left and right. Okay, between the last save and this save, I saved the code by running this. So let me show you. So we can look up, left, you know, left, right, up, down. We can also move around. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, put in code for gravity. So what you want to do is look to near the bottom of your code. This code velocity dot y uh, space minus equals space gravity. Uh, just that simple code right there will enable gravity. Okay, what we want to do now is replace this current move and slide code. So and when I say replace, we basically added code to it. So we have this vector three dot up and uh, this is setting things up for us where we'll, we're about to put in uh, jump code to will allow us to jump. However, because of this code, uh, the jump code that we're going to put in, you'll jump, but you won't be able to constantly jump again and again, even in midair. Okay, as far as the jump code, it's right under this uh, velocity.y space uh, minus equals uh, space gravity, where you want to put the code. And uh, this is the code right here. And this code is going to allow us to jump when we press the space bar, which previously we set up uh, when we set up the input map. This code right here will make things, well, well, this code right here will work with this code so that when you jump, you'll only be able to jump when you're on the ground. Okay, the code we're about to put in now, you want to look up to where you see your on ready var space camera, space equals dollar sign head slash camera underneath here. This code right here, what this is going to do is this is going to make it so that your mouse, uh, stays basically inside the window of your game. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to look to this uh, funk space uh, underscore input parentheses uh, event parentheses colon all, all of this code right here. We're going to go to the end of here. And what this code is going to do is when we, this is going to make uh, things work so that we're able to get out of our our game. So we won't be able to work the mouse outside of the game. However, when we press the escape button, we will be able to see as well as work our mouse and that'll allow us to exit out of the game. Okay, so with all of that code done, we'll press play. So we when we move our mouse, we're inside of our game. When I press forward, back, left, right, that all works. When I press the space bar, we can jump. And when we want to exit out of our game, we can press the escape key, then see our mouse, and then exit out of the game. Okay, as for this code here, I'll put this code in the description so you'll be able to get to this code. I wanted to make this tutorial because I wanted to, for there to be uh, one place where you could go and see how to make basic textures, the ground to walk on, as well as have your character have the ability to, to move around. Uh, as far as tutorials to, to look into this further, uh, things that I looked at or videos that I looked at, channels, Code with Tom, uh, garbage, uh, a few other tutorials. Those are some of the main ones as far as code. Uh, so yeah, I uh, that's it for the tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. 
for all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel and we share them thank you very much i really appreciate that and for those of you who would like to see more please subscribe and thank you for viewing